World Cup is over, but don't worry, we've got you covered. The FA Cup is the place for international stars. The S2-0 for Kaio Saka. Tipped away by Pickford. Nunez, what a brilliant finish. Pulisic. Ruben Neves from distance. Absolutely brilliant from Son Heung-min. Rashford pounces. Foden! Welcome to the Emirates FA Cup third round highlight show. Coming up, Premier League High Flyers Newcastle travel to Sheffield Wednesday, themselves second in League One. Aston Villa had won only one tie since reaching the 2015 final, so couldn't take League Two Stevenage for granted. And two sides who've won the cup 14 times between them, Manchester City and Chelsea, locked horns again. Plus the best of the rest from an action-packed third round. Newcastle had gone out at this stage of the competition six times in the last ten seasons, notably at the hands of third-tier Cambridge a year ago. However, much has changed at the club since then, and Eddie Howe's men arrived at Hillsborough third in the Premier League, having not lost in 15 matches. That said, Sheffield Wednesday were themselves unbeaten in 11 League One games. Ready to see which run would be halted was Ben Andrews. Some pouring forward here, five of them. This is Richie Mankio on the gallop as well. Isaac in the middle. Good chance, good save. First clear opening of this cup tight, and the returning Isaac after four months away would hope to do better from it. Good acceleration there from Mankio. He's found Isaac again, and he's denied by Cameron Dawson again. Relatively huge amounts of space for the Swede there. Fired in at Byers. That was a bit dicey, but he's turned away and lost four players as a result. Brilliant skill. And Wednesday pouring forward themselves here. Windass for Wednesday! 1-0! The shot's on at Hillsborough. The long Newcastle unbeaten run. Under threat. He might have been offside, but it counts. Matt Ritchie, dangerous, Botman, Anderson, what a save from Dawson, that's the best of the bunch. This is Jacob Murphy now, and that's a wonderful hit beaten out by Dawson. They've played really well here in Newcastle, they've threatened plenty, it's been a great game. Bruno's header, not the most helpful for Joel Linton. And Smith has poked it forward for Windass to double the lead. A hat-trick last time out. And now a brace in the cup against Newcastle for Josh Windass. Trippier's first touch is a corner. That's Wood, and it's Bruno, and it's game on. Suggestions of offside here too, and he was... That's one at either end, but it's 2-1. Windass from ambitious range, but what a hit. And then the follow-up nodded wide by Smith. Dubravka got a touch, so did the wall. What a hat-trick this nearly was. Trippier, majestic pass. Joel Linton. Will he go it alone? No, he's passed a word and he's converted it, but not in the football sense. It's a rugby finish over the bar. Nottingham Forest arrived at lowly championship side Blackpool, having lost only two of their last ten games, but they were quickly on the back foot. Marvin X Potato fired the 1953 winners in front, and that was a taste of things to come. Midway through the second half, Ian Paveda, who's on loan from Leeds, doubled the lead. The Tangerines had failed to win in five home games, but wrapped up this tie after 71 minutes thanks to CJ Hamilton's stylish finish. And that wasn't the end of the Seaside show. Late on, Jerry Yates made it four in memorable fashion. Forrest, who made 11 changes, pulled one back in stoppage time through Ryan Yates, but this was a chastening experience for them. 
The visit of championship leaders Burnley posed an obvious threat to struggling Bournemouth and an early defensive blunder allowed Manuel Benson to put the Clarets ahead. Vincent Company's men then repaid the favour with some sloppy play, which Ryan Christie gratefully took advantage of. Josh Cullen the guilty party, but two goals just before the break put Burnley in control. Another error at the back was seized upon in clinical fashion, eventually allowing Anas Zaruri to make it 2-1. And the 22-year-old Belgian was on target again four minutes later. A sharp finish to take his tally for the season to nine since arriving from Charleroi in August. On a wet afternoon by the south coast, Bournemouth gave themselves renewed hope early in the second half when Dominic Solanke reduced the arrears after Bailey Peacock Farrell saved his initial effort. But more uncertainty in the Bournemouth defence allowed Benson to steal in and secure a 12th win in 14 games for the 1914 winners. A late scramble very nearly brought a third goal for Gary O'Neill's strugglers, but Christie's header was cleared off the line before Lloyd Kelly hit the woodwork, and they've now lost nine of their last 11. No side has scored fewer goals than Cardiff in the Championship this season, but Premier League Leeds wouldn't have guessed that on the evidence of the first 45 minutes in South Wales. Jado Philogene, on loan from Aston Villa, fired the hosts ahead midway through the half, and they were two up soon afterwards. Andy Rinomoto, the architect, with a glorious pass that was followed by a sharp turn and finish from Shei Ojo. Leeds, cup winners in 1972, had lost their last five third round ties. But Rodrigo, one of three substitutes brought on midway through the second half, revived their hopes. He was then denied by a good save from Jack Anik. But the follow-up effort by Junior Firpo was kept out by the hand of Joel Bagan, who was subsequently sent off. Rodrigo failed to capitalise from the spot, though, as Anik went the right way. But three minutes into stoppage time, Leeds did equalise when Firpo's clever flick was turned in by 18-year-old Sonny Perkins. Revived by new manager Carlos Corberan, five-time winners West Brom took a very early lead at Chesterfield through Brandon Thomas Asante. Third in the National League, the home side's response was impressive and they drew level when Tyrone Williams bundled the ball home after Jamie Grimes' header back across goal. The winter sun matched the sparkle of the game and the Baggies bounced in front once more when Carlin Grant kept his composure to score his first goal since August. That meant three goals in the first 17 minutes, and there were two more before the break. Chesterfield, who memorably reached the last four in 1997, made it 2-2 through Armando Dobra. That was his fourth FA Cup goal of the season, and number five wasn't far behind. West Brom keeper David Button did well to keep out Joe Quigley's shot, only for Dobra to follow up at the double. And that looked like being enough to win it for Paul Cook's team until the 93rd minute when Asante's header ensured a replay at the Hawthorns. Since reaching the 2015 final, Aston Villa had won just one FA Cup tie. In the midst of their worst ever run in the competition, Unai Emery's side faced League Two promotion hopeful Stevenage, who under Steve Evans had lost just one of their last 14 matches in all competitions. Watching for us, Simon Brotherton. Cash. Here's Coutinho. He's seen plenty of the ball in this first half. Louise, Bailey, Ings, Sanson. Good chance. 1 0. First moment of real quality in the match from the Premier League team. Beautifully worked. And Morgan Sanson's first goal for Villa. And it's come in his first start of the season. Aston Villa 1, Stevenage 0. Cash getting in a spot of bother there. Clark finding Norris. He's away from Cash again. Oh, and he nearly found the top corner. Creating something from seemingly nothing. Well, Villa inching towards the fourth round in a tie against Stoke City. Here's Dendonka. Oh, he's in a spot of bother here. Dendonka, tug of the shirt and a challenge. It's going to be a penalty for Stevenage. Villa getting themselves into all sorts of bother there. And Leander Dendonka, what was he doing? Well, he'll be heading off down the tunnel now, having been 
sent off by referee Graham Scott. There was the tug, having lost the ball, and then the second challenge. What a moment in this FA Cup tie. Five minutes to go. What a chance for Stevenage to draw level. Jamie Reid, big moment. Oh, and he takes it with a plump. What a cool penalty under pressure there from Jamie Reid, the substitute. Brilliantly dispatched. Villa now under real pressure. Stevenage can sense a chance. It's Steve Campbell! 2 1 Stevenage! Campbell's first goal for them, and what a goal! What a time to do it! What a place as well! And we have an FA Cup upset on our hands here. Aston Villa with hardly any time to come back in the match here. Villa 1, Stevenage 2. Holders Liverpool haven't looked their usual selves for much of this season and Alisson wasn't his usual assured self midway through the first half when under no pressure he gifted a goal to Gonzalo Guedes. Wolves kept that lead until the stroke of half-time when Trent Alexander-Arnold's crossfield pass was converted by Darwin Nunez. And when Mo Salah capitalised on a poor defensive header from Totti, Wolves' hopes of knocking out Jurgen Klopp and his men for the third time in the FA Cup had receded drastically. There was much more to come though. Huang Hee Chan came off the bench to slide home an equaliser with a little over 20 minutes to play. And Yulin Lopetegui's side looked to have taken the lead again when, following a corner, Liverpool failed to clear the danger. The ball was eventually turned in by Totti, only for VAR to disallow the goal for a very controversial offside decision that wasn't able to be viewed by a camera and left the visitors incensed. Struggling in the bottom three of the Premier League, Everton faced a real test if their cup campaign was to negotiate its first obstacle. Sure enough, in form, Manchester United quickly seized the initiative, Anthony scoring after four minutes. Frank Lampard's men did secure an unlikely point at Manchester City a week ago and equalised courtesy of a baffling David De Gea error with Connor Cody, the primary beneficiary. It was to prove a bittersweet afternoon for Cody, though. Seven minutes after half-time, his unfortunate own goal restored United's lead. Everton refused to make life easy for their hosts and thought they'd equalised again through substitute Dominic Calvin-Lewin. But VAR disallowed the goal for a marginal offside decision. Then in the final minute of stoppage time, Ben Godfrey brought down Alejandro Garnacho. Marcus Rashford had scored in four successive games. That record is now five, and United have won seven on the bat. Two clubs on very different planes, but equally out of sorts here. Gillingham, currently bottom of the entire Football League, had the first genuine chance. Dom Jeffries denied by Daniel Everson. 2021 winners Leicester had lost three in a row in the league but retain interest in both domestic cups. Progress in this one coming courtesy of Kalichi Iannaccio's first goal in four months. Portsmouth beat Spurs in the semi-finals back in 2010 but the league one side sacked manager Danny Cowley during the week and were relieved to see Emerson Royale's header come back off the post. The tie was decided just after half-time when Harry Kane fired home his 265th goal for Tottenham to leave him one behind the club's record scorer, Jimmy Greaves. Three days after beating Chelsea in the league at Stamford Bridge, Manchester City faced Graham Potter's side again, this time with home advantage. Before kickoff, there was an emotional tribute to Gianluca Vialli, who so sadly passed away aged 58 earlier in the week. The hugely popular Italian won the FA Cup with Chelsea as both a player and manager. Commentary comes from Stuart Robson and Martin Tyler. I think they're discussing can we really shoot from this distance or does it need to be clipped into the box? No. Nope. Mahrez decides to have a shot. Well, that's extraordinary. He's done it in Chelsea again. It was certainly in his range. And Riyad Mahrez, in these three games, in a short space of time between these two clubs, has scored in all of them. Again, 
Ramsey going towards the near post. And the port going in. Rodri's there. Shot from Alvarez. Here's the ball that was played into the box. And when it hits Havertz on the arm, that's going to be a penalty. He's punched the ball away, hasn't he? Under the current laws, this will be a handball, this will be a penalty. He's fearing the worst, and the cheers tell him he doesn't need to look round at the referee. Julian Alvarez, with almost half an hour gone. With this penalty, oh, and he nearly got there. Marisa Balaga, well, he did get there, but he couldn't keep it out, and it is 2-0. What a few weeks it's been for him. Should actually save it once he gets there. Mares got Hall in his sights, and Walker arriving, and Foden turns in, and it's 3-0 Manchester City. They're cutting Chelsea apart here. Walker makes the run, Kovacic can't get there, maybe Kulabali could have come out and tried to block it, he doesn't do so, and Phil Foden just almost standing there. Brilliant from Man City. Fernando Silva, and down goes Foden, and the referee has given another penalty to Manchester City. Well, Bernardo Silva plays the right ball. Yeah, there is a clip. The covering defender just catches Foden. Here, misses the ball as well. Koulibaly. Six minutes to go. Mares finds the back of the net. And it's Chelsea, doesn't miss against them. And he just hit that one with pace. Riyad Mares high into the roof of the net. Kepa, again, try to play a few mind games. Quite down the middle, but... Close to it, no stopping that. This was one of five all top flight ties, and it was won by the out of form club that desperately required a boost. Former Brentford favourite Said Ben Rama was the West Ham hero with the ultimate X Factor moment 10 minutes from time. Runners-up 40 years ago, Brighton made a fine start against Championship Middlesbrough when Pascal Gross fired them ahead at the Riverside. Borough, who beat Manchester United and Spurs to reach the last eight last season, levelled after 13 minutes to Chuba Akpom, who was once on loan at Brighton. Fast becoming an attacking force under Roberto De Zerbi, the Seagulls regained the lead on the half-hour mark. Kauro Matoma's effort looked to be going in, Adam Lallana made sure. Alexis McAllister came off the bench at half-time for his first appearance since winning the World Cup with Argentina and quickly demonstrated his undoubted ability with that highly skilled finish. Full of confidence, he then got on the end of Gross's cutback to add his second and put the contest beyond doubt. Having helped themselves to four at Everton during the week, Brighton then went one better here when German striker Dennis Undav rounded things off. Two Carabao Cup wins have provided the only solace amidst a run of six successive Premier League defeats for Southampton and it threatened to be another tale of woe for the top flight's basement boys when Odson Edward put Crystal Palace ahead. James Ward-Prowse is renowned for his potency from free kicks but there was a touch of fortune about that equaliser, the set-piece evading everyone including Vicente Gaeta. Palace reached the semis last season, but when their Spanish stopper dwelled on the ball, Adam Armstrong was on hand to pick his pocket. Struggling in the Premier League, but in the Cup, the Saints go marching on to round four. Sixty places separated non-league Wrexham and League One Coventry, with both in fine form. Just two defeats in ten for the Sky Blues, the same amount in 29 outings for the Welsh side. Commentary comes from Phil Blacker. Has Lee. And Connor switching it. Oh, Hall Johnson, confident this from Wrexham. Here's the captain, Luke Young, with time to deliver a really good cross, and Dolby's on the end of it. And Wrexham in front here. Sam Dolby made the header his. Rising between the two defenders to get the crucial contact. McFadden 
Elliot Lee looking to bend one. Oh, and it's gone all the way in. It's an extraordinary goal from Elliot Lee. And it's the second for Wrexham in the space of six minutes. Caught out the keeper, evaded everybody. And ends up in that far corner. Some goal. Coventry committed here and winning back possession well. Breaks for Martin Waghorn with options either side. Casey Palmer. Back towards Waghorn, it's just behind him, gets the foot in though. Sheeple strike here! And the Sky Blues have hope again. The first goal of the season is a timely one for Ben Sheaf to halve the deficit. Waghorn heavily involved in the build-up. Came through a crowd of players. Howard left a little unsighted in goal. And Coventry now have the momentum. That's the long throw. Hasn't yet been dealt with at all. It's O'Connor! It's in! It's against the balance of play, but it's 3-1 Wrexham in first half at a time. And it's Tom O'Connor who scores. Coventry just didn't take the opportunity to get it clear. And O'Connor was left unattended. Again, the long throw causing issues as it comes for Kluwer. And then it hit the hand of Panzo. It's a penalty. Penalty to Wrexham. And further punishment for Jonathan Panzo because he sent off. Tom Neal has shown the straight red. Paul Mullin confidently into the corner. Wrexham's top scorer is in on the act. And they're well on their way, seemingly, to round four. Palmer. To give chase and will continue here after the slip presents possession with all sorts of space and selfish for Jokeres and a glimmer of hope for Coventry City. Their top scorer Victor Jokeres on through necessity after injury to Tavares in the first half has got his goal and they have a little bit of hope here to Coventry. There's Palmer sizing this one up. Oh, he found the sweet spot with that. It's a stunning goal, and they're trying to clamber back into contention against all the odds. Boreham Wood have become only the fourth non-league side to reach the third round three years running, but found themselves a goal down early on to League One Accrington Stanley. Ryan Astley on target after six minutes. On a windy, wet afternoon at Meadow Park, the lowest-ranked side left in the competition left it late before Lee Unlove met Femi Ilisandi's cross, so they'll meet again. In the history of the competition, no side has gone out at this stage more often than QPR, who, along with Plymouth, had lost 50 times. When Samfield forced the ball over the line, the hoops looked like ensuring that stat wouldn't be extended. However, just three minutes later, the League One outfit were on level terms. Toto Siala left totally unmarked in the QPR box. And from another corner, Fleetwood found the winner. Promise Omachiri with the turn and volley on 67 minutes. An unwanted record for QPR out on their own with a 51st third round exit. 1978 winners Ipswich had lost their last nine third round ties, but deservedly took the lead just before half time against Rotherham. Cameron Humphreys with the finish. Two minutes after the restart, the Millers, trying to reach round four for the first time in 21 years, were awarded a penalty. Richard Keogh fouling Connor Washington, who picked himself up to equalise. The League One high flyers weren't put off their stride, though. Another penalty, this time for Wes Harding's challenge on Freddie Ladapo after 74 minutes, gave them a chance to go back in front, and Connor Chaplin duly restored the advantage. Five minutes later, Ladapo, who signed a new contract on Friday, scored against his former club. Three minutes from time came the game's third penalty. Marcus Harness pulled down on this occasion. Wes Burns blasted home the spot kick. Ipswich into round four for the first time in 13 years. Bobby Kamwa's mishit cross was as close as Burton came here. Max Crocombe saving the day for Grimsby, who've hammered high-flying Plymouth, stolen a last gas victory at Cambridge, and now completed a hat-trick of League One scalps with this win, sealed by Lewis Richardson just three minutes after coming off the home bench. It was Brannigan challenging in midfield. Feisty and committed Oxford, but they're 
push back here by Fabio Vieira. Brings Saka into the play, that's Tommy Asu on the overlap. Drills it in low and hard for Ginty, gets down well. First attacking threat we've seen from Arsenal. Holding. to bring Martinelli into the game. Up against Anderson. This is Albert Sammy Lekonga, the block there made by Elliot Moore. They're claiming handball as well against the Oxford captain. Let's have a look here as the shot comes in. It's not in an unnatural position, but definitely does strike the arm. With a looping long throw in. Oh, and Ketia was on the end of that one. Just swung his leg at it. It was a rare sighting of goal for the Premier League leaders in the first half. Oh, suddenly could open up here. It's Matty Taylor. Oh, Matt Turner stands his ground well. Hint of an opening there for Oxford United. Taylor stretching. Turner gathering. Rob Holding. Again going on. Looking for the run of Vieira. Bringing Saka into it. This is much better from Arsenal. Superb block by Lewis Bate. But that's the best move of the match from Arsenal so far. Tommy Yasu continuing to get right in the goalkeeper's grill. And McGinty does really well at the near post. Look at the pressure being put on him here by Tommy Asu. Fabio Vieira, the player with the ball at his feet here. Decent looking ball, it's 1 0, and Mohamed El Nenny breaks the deadlock. Oxford's resistance finally comes to an end 63 minutes into the game. Beautiful delivery, planted home by El Nenny. It was a little bit loose there from McGuane. El Nenny into Vieira in space, and Ketia, great chance, it'll be two. Fabio Vieira involved once again. It was a delightful free kick from the Portuguese player and a super pass as well, but excellent finish from Eddie and Ketia for 2-0. Two goals in seven second half minutes. Oxford still searching to try and get away back in the game. Gabriel scoops the ball clear and Ketia collected by Martinelli. Ketia continuing the run. And ahead, beautifully timed, Martinelli, what a goal, what a classy finish. Lovely combination play there between Eddie Nketiah and Gabriel Martinelli. Look at the commitment there from Nketiah, beautiful timing. No VAR here to look at the minutiae of whether he was quite onside or not. It was a close call, but it's a classy finish. Arsenal, three up and sauntering into the fourth round. Oxford given a really good account of themselves this evening, played really well, but Arsenal going through with room to spare, and it could get worse for Oxford here. Here's Emil Smith-Rowe. Oh, and the deflection comes off Anderson, taking it wide of the goal. It stays at 3-0.